Hello everyone, Denise here. Today I'm going to show you how to make the Trinity washcloth dishcloth. Let's get started. So the materials you will need are some yarn and a hook. Uh, with this stitch, you do want to go up a hook size for whatever it recommends on your, on your yarn. Go ahead and go up a hook size so that you're creating more loose stitches. Okay, so I'm going to use peaches and cream. Um, this is stripey. This is an old ball that I got. 2019 it's labeled. So I've had it for a while. I'm going to edge it in white. Uh, and I'm going to create the dishcloth in this one, which is one of the newer ones that I got at Hobby, uh, not Hobby Lobby, at Walmart. And I love this one because it is so soft. Um, the colors are very soft linen. So we are doing the Trinity stitch uh, for our stitch and this is in multiples of two. So we're going to go ahead and you can chain as many as you would like for your washcloth dishcloth in size. Just make sure it is even. The This yarn itself called for an H hook. I'm using an I hook. So I'm using a 5.5 instead of a 5.0 mm, but I crochet loosely to begin with, so I didn't think going up more is necessary. Three, five, six, seven, I want mine about eight inches wide. I'm gonna go two more stitches, 21 and 22. Yeah, because with the pull in, it will definitely be smaller, and I'm going to create a border on it. So, okay, so the beginning, um, we're gonna skip this first stitch right here, or, or chain. We're gonna go into the second chain from the hook and make a single crochet. Okay, and now we're going to start our Trinity stitch for this row. We are going to go back into the stitch or place where we just made our single crochet. We're going to pull up a loop and keep it there. We're going to go into the next chain, pull up a loop and keep it there. We're going to go into the next chain, pull up a loop and keep it there. Okay, so you're going to have four loops on your hook. Now you're going to yarn over and pull through all four. See why we wanted a bigger hook? It creates for easier crocheting. Now when you chain one after your Trinity stitch, make sure you do it loosely because you will have to go in to this space on your next row. So you wanna make sure that you chain it loosely so it's not difficult for you next time around. So now we're going to repeat that trinity stitch all the way across our row. We're going to go into the same stitch we just worked into, pull up a loop, go into the next chain, pull up a loop, go into the next chain, pull up a loop. We have four loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over and go through all four and chain one loosely repeat that. Go in the same space, pull up a loop, go in the next chain, pull up a loop, go in the next chain, pull up a loop, four loops on your hook, yarn over, go through all four, chain one loosely. Alright, gonna keep going, going into the same space we just did our trinity stitch, pulling up a loop, Going into the next chain, pulling up a loop. Going into the next chain and pulling up a loop. We have four loops on our hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all four. Chain one loosely.
Okay, we are ending our row here. Uh, we can still put one more stitch in here. So we are going to finish our row and I'll show you what it looks like to finish each row. We're gonna go in the same stitch like we have been, pulling up a loop, going into the next stitch and pulling up a loop, going into the last stitch and pulling up a loop. Now we have our four loops on our hook and we are gonna yarn over and go through all four just like we have been doing. We are not chaining one loosely. We are going to instead, since we are at the end of our row, we're going to end with a single crochet because we began our beginning of our row with a single crochet and we want to match on each end. So we started with a single crochet and we end with a single crochet. No, no chain one in between those um, because we want it to match on both sides and we want it to be even all the way up. So we are going to continue on to row two and row two will be our repeat for the rest of the washcloth, dishcloth. We will chain one, turn our work. We're going to put a single crochet in this first single crochet we made last row. Okay. And then we are going to do our Trinity stitch, going in that same space pulling up a loop, going in our next space, pulling up a loop, going into our next space, which if you crochet too tightly will be difficult because this is that one I was telling you to chain loosely on. Then we have our four loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through all four, chain one loosely. Continuing on for the rest of this row, gonna go in that same space, pull up a loop, Next one, pull up a loop. Next one, pull up a loop. Four loops on our hook. Yarn over and pull through all four. Chain one loosely. So while making the stitch, you can keep track of where you're at with your pull-ups, pulling, pulling up your loops. Sli simply, <laughs> simply by knowing that on your third loop that you're pulling up um, and finishing your trinity stitch it will be your last one that you pull up on that's the one that was the chain one from your previous row so you'll always know that the third one you go into is going to be just a little bit smaller than your other two so the first one is the stitch we were just in the second one is the next stitch right next to it and then the third one, your last pull up will always be in that stitch that's always just a little bit smaller than the rest. So then you know you have four loops on your hook. If you're counting correctly and going into all the right spots, you'll yarn over and then chain one loosely. And uh, this is how I keep, I was keeping track of my stitches when I was doing this. Because I would know if I was on track to have the same amount in the right spots if I was doing that exact thing. So that is as easy as the Trinity stitch gets. I mean, it's that's all there is to it. So you just repeat this for the entire project until you get to the length of your project that you desire. And at the end of every row, we're gonna go on our same stitch, next stitch, and our last single crochet from the previous row. We're gonna yarn over, pull through all four, do not chain one. Put a single crochet back in that stitch. That's how we will finish each and every row. All right, so that's, that's all there is to this dishcloth. 
I will show you how you know you have a complete square once I get to that spot. Um, I'm going to go ahead and keep working and I will fast forward the video so that it goes quicker. But just so that you can see the next row, this is gonna be our repeat row. We chain one, turn our work. In this first space, we do a single crochet. And we start in with our Trinity stitch. We go into that same space, pull up a loop. Next space, pull up a loop. Next space, pull up a loop. Yarn over, go through all four, chain one loosely. Go in that same stitch, pull up a loop. Next stitch, pull up a loop. Next stitch, pull up a loop. That one was a bit tight. Yarn over, pull through all four, chain one. Same stitch. Next stitch, last stitch, pull through all four, chain one loosely. Okay, so you can see the progress. You'll have the same amount of Trinity stitches in every row, no matter, no matter what, it'll be the same amount every single row. We're not increasing at all. We're just building on the fabric now. So I'm gonna continue to work on my project and I will come back to you once it is ready to find out if it is a square so that I can edge it. I'll be right back. Okay, so I think mine is a square now, and this is how I check to see if my washcloth slash dishcloth is a square. I take one corner, and I fold it up to the other corner, and if it fits perfectly, it's a square. So I'm going to edge mine now with uh, just a single crochet edging. I don't have a scissor in here, so I am going to use some fingernail clippers to cut my yarn because that works. Okay, stitch came out here. All right, I'm just using white to edge my dishcloth. And I just attach it like you would when you're changing colors. And then I'm going to chain one and I'm going to put a single crochet in the same stitch. I'm working on the edge of the dishcloth now. So a good rule for me is I just go in wherever the hook will go in easily. I don't want to fight the yarn. I also want to make sure that I am putting the same amount of stitches ish on both sides. So um, if you want, you can count them. You can eyeball it as long as it works for you. I'm great with it. Um, I just go in wherever it's comfortable and I'm going to do the same on the other side. So it may be one, two, three per, per thing here. I'll, I'll just go along as I see fit. So I put one single crochet in the corner there where I attach the yarn. I'm going to go ahead and go into this. Do a single crochet. I'm going to go in this one and do a single crochet. I think I'll just go in here and do a single crochet. That seems like it's going to work out great. So wherever the hook says, yeah, I fit well here, I'm going to go ahead and put it in there. And like I said, if you want, you can count your stitches. You can 
I'll make sure that it's X amount or, or do what I'm doing and just go in wherever. As long as it is pretty even on both sides, it should work out well. You always want to put three single crochet in your corner stitch to give you a nice corner. That gives you one stitch for each side and then one for the corner. See how that works out? One here, one here, and one for the corner. You want to do that on every corner, three single crochets in every corner. And then this is one of the ends, so I'm just going to go ahead and put a single crochet. This is the beginning edge, so it is more loose than our finishing edge up there, but that's okay. Again, I'm just going in wherever it feels like it will, it will make sense and not be too many stitches and not be too little stitches. I mean, it's a dishcloth. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? We're going to scrub with it. If you are doing something different other than a dishcloth, you would want to go ahead and try to be more consistent. Maybe even count those stitches. But again, that's up to you. Three in every corner. And I'm going up the other side. I do believe that this older peaches and cream is a tad bit thicker and more coarse as far as feel goes, which is, um, that's fine. They clearly have improved their yarn. They improved their colors for sure. I do like the new colors a lot more. Uh, I buy them simply because they're beautiful. <laughs> so when I'm at Walmart and I'm like, wow, that's a really great colorway. I don't need cotton yarn. I'm going to buy that. That's me. All right. I'm rounding up to the last corner here. Need to get some more yarn up here. I put one there and then this should be my corner stitch so that's going to need three. We're going to finish the last row, the last edge. So I hope you enjoyed working the Trinity stitch. It is a very beautiful stitch, very easy once you know what, you know, the basic pattern is to it. It's a one row repeat, which makes it very easy to do um, great projects like prayer shawls. I know that um, I plan on making a prayer shawl with a Trinity stitch, and that's also symbolic. So trinity okay so i am coming up to the corner here where i put my one um one one stitch my single crochet where i had started so i'm gonna go ahead and do two right here and then i'm gonna slip stitch into this last chain one that i started with and then i will cut my yarn with my handy dandy fingernail clipper And then you have yourself a very nice washcloth. This Trinity stitch, the Trinity stitch has this um, squishy feel once you work up the fabric. It is very nice, very, very nice. Especially if you're using a little larger hook. If you use, uh, if you use a smaller hook or the hook that's recommended, if you don't crochet loosely, you're gonna have a denser fabric. Um, but if you do go up in hook size, you'll get this nice squishiness that is just, just very, very nice. My corner stitch is a little funky there, but I'm going to weave in the ends. Let me grab a needle. Okay, I'm going to weave in these ends really quick. I 
usually just go back down into the stitch and then weave in here and there for a little bit. Just enough to where I know it's not going to come out while washing. Since I am doing white, I'm going to go up into the white to sort of camouflage it and hide it. The other end of the white, so... that going this way so that it's not too thick in that one area from both being put in there. Yeah, this is the um, the old stuff is much more rough and a bit thicker, if you can see that, than the new stuff, the new stripey. The new stripey is incredibly soft for peaches and cream. I like it a lot. I did several washcloths in a blue colorway. I just enjoy making them. Dishcloths, that is, washcloths. I always have. Um, when I used to do, I did some charity work back in the day, and I would make tons of washcloths for donation, and uh, I would always edge it in a contrasting color, which made it more fun for me to work them up. Also very beautiful when tied with a ribbon. And this is our beginning, so I'm going to weave that in. And then you have yourself a very nice gift. This could be put in, uh, say, a package like you want to do a spa package for somebody for a present. Um, say, like a bride's gift or bridesmaid's gifts. Um, a baby shower gift. This could be a cloth for anybody, um, any age. And with this, the stripey being so soft like it is now, that's that'd be great against your face. So there you have it. That is the Trinity Stitch washcloth. And I only used a little bit of this. Like, it wasn't even a full ball of yarn to begin with but I could probably get a whole nother one plus out of there. And I only use just a dab of the, the white. So I hope you enjoyed making the Trinity stitch dishcloth, washcloth. And now you can use that pattern to make whatever you would like. As far as projects go, you could make a scarf, you could make a flat hat and then sew it up at the top. You could do a blanket. You could do a shawl. You could do a cowl. You could do many, many different projects. Uh, you could even do a poncho with two large rectangles. So thank you so much for watching everyone. I appreciate each and every one of you. And until next time, guys.